I want you to think about volume. So what I've just done is extrapolate, I'm going to extrapolate from fat over here. So why is this important? One, people are moving away from surgery. The fat is already offering a, a way to, to treat people without an incision. What's great about this also is this, it's an office-based procedure and it sells them on fat. They understand fat. Thank you so much. It allows them to understand the benefit of fat. Once they see it, they want it. So this is a, this is some techniques I've actually come up with that are very different from your, your traditional injections. All right, let's pull this up. This is a slightly shorter talk. All right, we've had enough of that. So we have a lot of places to fill in the face. What are you going to fill? What would you prefer to fill when a person comes in? These are the areas that matter. If you forget everything else on the face, remember these three zones. These are the areas that will create incredible patient satisfaction consistently. So this is w what I do, and I've actually even changed some from this lecture here. I've made some modifications, but I, I use radius in the cheek jawline, and I use hyaluronic acid around the eyes, but now, with the advent of uh, Perlane and Juvenile Ultra Plus, I've really s slowed down my radius because I love the reversibility, and I love the ability to actually be able to show someone something and then convert them to fat immediately if they want to or within six months to a year. Um, I don't do Sculptor anymore. I sold off most of my product. It's not a bad product. It's a good product, but I found some problems with it. Number one, it's very expensive. You know, charging a patient over a period of several months and waiting for that result to show up, and plus periorbally, it's not a great, not a great treatment. You've got to put depot method. You, there's no sculpting. You're sort of just guessing for it to come forward. I've seen some lumps through it. Uh, so those are the things that I don't like. And plus, is you're, you know, even though I'm a pan facial volume person, what I'm teaching you today is the exact opposite with fillers because it's too expensive to fill volume everywhere. You want to hit the major areas of impact that will make a difference, which are the three areas I talked about. So Sculptor is great. You can boot, do a full pan facial fill, but it hurts when you get outside the block, even with good topicals. And what I try to do is stay within my blocks, and all my injections go out from within my blocks outward, and it targets the key zones to, to help rejuvenate someone. So what I do is I use a sharp needle, 27 and a, one and a quarter inch, to fill with Radius and Juvederm Ultra Plus and Perlane for the deeper volume fills. And then periorbally, I use Restylane or Juvederm Ultra to fill it with a blunt cannula. So I do exactly the same technique I do with fat, but I use fillers with it. And I do that same transcutaneous perpendicular with a little, f with a little um, cannula that I get from Tulip. So here's a little uh, chart that you can take a look at here, which is the fact that periorbally I use hyaluronic acid for two reasons. One, it's smooth. I hate ra radius around the eyes. It's uh, easy to overcorrect. It's easy to get a problem. You can't correct it then. Second problem, I've seen some idiosyncratic, idiopathic erythema and bumpiness. I don't know why. And I've talked to some of my colleagues. They've seen the same thing. So I don't really advocate radius or calcium hydroxyl appetite around the eyes. Um, and I, this is what I, my usual volumes that I put in, I, and I'll go through that um, more as I go through some of the, the before and after slides. Uh, okay, what else is here? And this is, this is the opposite. This is not, instead of using radius, I use, this is a full hyaluronic profile. So here's some of the results. This is a lady that uh, had uh, juve, uh, I'm trying to remember, Juvenum Ultra Plus into the cheeks and jawline and Restylane around the eyes. One syringe a side of Restylane, so one syringe, one syringe, and then one syringe for the cheeks of Juvenum Ultra Plus and one syringe across the jawline. And you can see, this is a lady that came to me two weeks before her daughter's wedding and said, make me look great. Fill my lines. Guess what the only place I didn't fill? Her lines. Because the lines are irrelevant. I did a little bit in the lips too, by the way. Here's a lady, 35 years old, I want to do fat grafting first. She's so thin I can't even find a fat. So what I did was I just put some radius in the cheeks, nothing in the jawline because she doesn't need it there. But that's a whole 0.75 aside or 0.7 cc's aside of radius and then one cc of wrestling for each lower eyelid. Here's a lady's interesting story. She's a flight attendant. On the left you actually see her halfway through her vacation week. On the right, that's after 10 straight days of flying. Which one looks more rested? It's the volume that counts. And the other trick that's going to blow your mind is look at the eyelids on the left. Don't those upper eyelids look heavy to you? Well, how about on the right? Do you think I did anything for them? I actually did nothing for them. But when you start filling the lower eyelid cheek, it creates balance with the heavy eyelid and your eye doesn't perceive it as much as being heavy. That's the trick. And targeting the zones that count. So I, this is an anterior cheek jawline fill. Uh, lower eyelid cheek jawline. It's, it's one cc. It's one. The standard uh, 1.2 cc's of the radius. One syringe. 
um, placed mainly into the cheek. I think, I don't remember exactly, probably 0.4 aside and then whatever's left in the pre-jowl. And then one cc aside of Restylane. This is one cc aside of Juvederm Ultra around the eyes and one syringe of radius distributed about evenly into the cheeks and jawline. And you can see that there's so much more light that hits that face and that upper brow that looks so heavy to you perceptually is actually not so heavy looking anymore when you fill the lower eye of the cheek and jawline. 38 year old has been filling her lines for five years. Now all I did was I filled her cheeks, lower eyelid. That's juvenile under the eyes, radius into the cheeks and jawline, and about even uh, that one syringe of radius spread out. I personally think radius is still the cheapest, longest term product you can use in the majority of patients, minus a few that lose it in three months. But it's not reversible. It's, not, uh, it's irreversible, so that's the problem with it. This is actually a great photo. This is what started me to take my long-term Botox photos. I forgot to take his before. He's been my patient for two years. And I said, let's go, com oh, I don't have one from two years ago. So I, this, I didn't do, I've never done his glabellar for Botox, but I've been doing it now consistently about every three to four months, his forehead. And if you look, after two years, his lines are gone. But I want you to see, this is Juvederm under the eyes, and this is a full 0.7 of radius into each cheek. Again, targeting the malar septum. And that's the other thing that's interesting. I don't know if you've seen this, but I don't cover the zygoma. But your mind, when you see it, you don't see the zygomatic arch anymore. Because once I provide continuity between the zygomatic arch and the malar depression, your eye just, just draws the extension of that malar eminence all the way across, that ma anterior malar cheek all the way across the zygoma. So that it becomes one unit. And your eye, you don't, I mean, it's ideal that you cover the bone. But to make it easy, just target the malar depression, and then there's continuity with the uh, outer cheek. And then I, I, this is how I'd stage it in most people. If someone's heavy, I would say the pre-jowl is probably the one of the most important areas you fill so that you can take the heaviness away. If they're thinner and they're gaunt, the number one area is their cheek. So one in terms of priority, two or one and two, depending on the heaviness of the patient. Th uh, I would say three for the eyes and then labia and mandibular being four and then nasolabials. The, the, I didn't, the only thing I didn't fill on her are nasolabials, and it's the only thing that I don't think matters. I think it's the least important thing to fill. There's a 38-year-old who's had her lips, I think they're slightly off balance. I fill a little bit of perlane to the lower lip, but I did um, perlane into the uh, cheeks, uh, one perlane into the jaw, no, actually, I, I'm sorry, I split a perlane, 1.1 cc's into the cheeks and jawline, about 50-50, and then one cc of restylane each lower eyelid. And that's, these are all about a week after the, the treatment, by the way. Uh, if you're wondering when the photo was taken. So conclusions, I think if you, tar you, you basically simulate volume, I think volume hopefully has been convincing both from my fat photos and as well as my filler photos, but there are two ways to approach the same thing and it helps people that are, not, are quite timid with the fat to get it and, and to, to do this in that technique. And using blood cannulas around the eye I think is very, very safe. Um, this is my last conclusion slide here is the fact that I really like hyaluronic acid. I've moved, I've done everything and I've really moved back to a full, now with Perlane and Juvenile Ultra Plus I'm moving, because I, I can convert to fat, I do pretty much hyaluronic acid unless the person doesn't have enough funds to convert to fat and really wants the most longevity on a product, I usually sell them on the, ra the radius and that in 90% holds well and a minority get an idiosyncratic thing, they absorb it in two or three months and that unfortunately happens too. Um, and it's also ease of sale. People are familiar with hyaluronic acid. It's hard to tell them calcium hydroxylapatite, polyl lactic acid, and all the other stuff out there. And it's ease of inventory. Um, and anyways, I use Radius still because if they are looking for the least expensive, longest lasting product, I still think it's there. Perlane may come in a close second. I don't know. The jury's still out. For me, it's too, too early a product for, in my hands to tell you that. So that's it.